Good morning. It's Easter Sunday as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I always like to begin this service with a, with a hymn. It's one of my favorites. Christ the Lord is risen today. Number 302. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia. Earth and heaven in chorus say, Alleluia. Raise your joys and trumpets high, Alleluia. <clears throat> Sing ye heavens and earth reply, Alleluia. Love's redeeming work is done, Alleluia. Fought the fight, the battle won, Alleluia. Death in vain forbids him rise, Alleluia. Christ has opened paradise, Alleluia. Soar we now where Christ has led, Alleluia. Falling our exalted head, Alleluia. Made like Him, and we, we rise, Alleluia. O'er the cross, the grave, and skies, Alleluia. As we come to prayer this morning, I just really appreciate how this church has really stayed together. We've been talking on the phone a lot. We've been, people have been mailing in their offerings. And most of all, the concern we've had for each other. I've had more calls and emails wanting to know how I was doing. And that's really a great thing. We truly are the little church with a big heart. And I'm so glad for that. We do want to pray for all the other churches in our area, too. Some are having some very serious financial problems because their expenses are a lot higher than we are at this little church. Our building is definitely paid for since it was built in 1865. Um, so let's now bow our heads and come to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this Easter Sunday. And although we would like to all be together as a church family with all the big crowds we always have on Easter, today we're all going to be in our homes. But technology is going to be our friend today as we can bring this message, the message of the risen Savior, Jesus Christ. So Lord, again, I ask your blessing upon us and thank you for your protective hand that's protected our church family. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn is number 322, Up From the Grave He Arose. And this is really a good song, and we'll do all the three verses since there's only three. So, Up From the Grave He Arose. <clears throat> my Lord. <clears throat> Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lived forever with the saints to ring. He arose, he arose, alleluia, Christ arose. Vainly they watch his bed, Jesus my Savior. Vainly they seal the dead, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose, with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with his saints to ring. He arose, he arose, alleluia, Christ arose. Death cannot keep his prey, Jesus my Savior. He tore the bars away, Jesus my Lord. 
Up from the grave he arose With a mighty triumph o'er his foes He arose a victor from the dark domain And he lives forever with his saints to reign He arose, he arose Hallelujah, Christ arose The scripture today is found in the Gospel of Matthew Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, reading verses 1 through 10. I've called this message the great discovery. For these ladies went to the tomb preparing to, for, for death, for preparing the body for final burial, and to their discovery, the body wasn't there. So we read this out of Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for the angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going up the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like, his appearance <clears throat> was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The gods were so afraid of him, they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. Just as he said, Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead, as going ahead of you and to Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, I just pray now that you would speak through me the message you have placed on my heart. It's a familiar story, but I pray as I proclaim the message, it will speak to our hearts again. And may we be so grateful that we serve a risen Savior, Jesus Christ. For because of Jesus, we now have eternal life. Now use me as your instrument, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. What we have here is Matthew's story of an empty tomb. There's something rather fitting about Mary and the two Marys coming to the grave. You see, when you think about it, they had been at the foot of the cross. Scripture tells us they had been there when they placed the body in the tomb. And now they are there to receive the glorious message. They were the first to know the joy of the resurrection. Think about that. They went there, of course, preparing to prepare the body. But they found they were confronted with an empty tomb. When they left the tomb, they were not thinking about the resurrection, thinking when they were heading for the tomb. They weren't thinking of Jesus raising from the dead. They were going to prepare the body. But the major problem they had was, how will we roll away the stone? Now, have you ever been to Israel? There's two places that they call the two sites of where the tomb is at. I think the church one's probably more accurate. But if you go to Gordon's Calvary, you can walk through it's a cemetery, and they show, uh, you can actually walk into a tomb. And it shows you how there's this trough and the stone is about like this. And when the body was inside, they would push the stone. It would roll down an incline and lock into place. Those two women would never have been able to roll that stone up there. In fact, it's been hard for two men to roll the stone back. But when they got there, to their great <laughs> relief, I guess you could say, that the stone was rolled away. If someone would have told them back then that someone could raise from the dead, you'd rather question the whole thing. In fact, you might say it's a fiction story. But Jesus said that he would raise again from the dead. Think about that. And the angel reminds them of the promise Jesus made. He confronts the ladies and say, it's as he told you. His every word summons us to believe. In fact, there are many today that question this. Did it really happen? There's some crazy theories that he gained, gained consciousness and walked off somewhere. They call it the swoon theory. Others say the disciples stole the body. But that's not the case. Jesus was definitely dead. When he was pierced his side, well, out came water. His blood was gone. Think about that. It's definitely, how can you deny the resurrection of Christ? The question we must all answer, do you really believe that? But a lot of people had doubt. These two women did not set out that morning to celebrate something great and joyous. You see, in the Christian church, people say, what's the greatest thing, Easter or Christmas? Well, to me, without the resurrection, it doesn't mean a thing. 
because simply all he proclaimed would be nothing, would be true. But because he rose from the dead, he defeated Satan, and he became, again, the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. You see, a belief in the resurrection is the very foundation of what the Christian church rests. Now, behind me, on Good Friday, we had the tomb. You'll notice that the tomb is lit up. The tomb is empty. We don't go to a cemetery to visit the grave of Jesus like we do other family members. See, the symbol of the church is the empty tomb. Oh, the cross is important, of course, as we talked about it on Good Friday. But when you think about it, it's the empty tomb. Secondly, they were told to go and tell the disciples. When the women discover the fact that Christ was not there, the first thing the angel does to them is tell them in verse 6, he has to say, he says, come and see. Now notice he says these words. He is not here, he's risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Come and see Christ. See, he's not there. Keep in mind that Christianity is not, a come, not just a come and see experience. But we have to go out and tell others, just as the ladies were told to do the same thing. We were told to do the same thing. In Matthew 28 shows that the angel was quite clear of what would happen next. Now, verse 7 says, then go quickly and tell his disciples he is risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. Go quickly and share the good news. You know, when something happens good to us, we might we'll get on the telephone or we'll talk to other people. I got to tell you, something really great happened to me. Have you ever done that? Sure we have. Say, oh, you're not going to believe what happened. It was just a great thing. So kind of the same way, I hope they didn't say you're not going to believe what happened. But we do know that when they came to tell the disciples, they weren't so quick to grasp what had really taken place. But they were told to go and tell. That was the first command given by the angel to do that. And again, what better news than to talk about the resurrected Christ when you think about that? Third, they were told to, they were urged to rejoice. And the person who has met Jesus Christ now has eternal life. And you do rejoice when you know the Lord. A lot of people, though, don't have joy in their life. Right now, with all the stuff going on, we're being confined to houses and everything, and on the news they're talking about, the one news person said, she's really, don't, when he wasn't, doesn't want to even talk to her kids. There's a lot of, you know, spouses are arguing and children are arguing, and, and we just want to get out there and, and, and get away from people for a while. And how long is this going to last? I, I talked to my brother, he says, how am I going to live like this? This is a terrible thing. So a lot of people aren't exactly showing joy. I heard so many negative things that this will be the most, most joy, joy, like they were joyless, if there's such a word, the most joyless Easter. But you know what? Our joy in the Lord does not depend on what's happening, the economy, uh, the virus that's going around. No. The joy comes when we read John, 5, John 15, 11. Jesus said these words, and I, I love this passage. These things I've spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. Now notice the joy I'm going to put in you, but your joy may be full. Don't let the whole situation, and you know, you go to the store, you can't get this, you can't get that, you're worried to be around people, you're afraid of people, there's fear and everything else. But on this Easter Sunday, don't let the situation take away the greatest joy, and that joy is knowing Jesus Christ, the risen Savior. I firmly believe that when we have the peace of Christ, we can face anything. 25 years ago, I had surgery, a tumor taken out of the side of my head. I was very nervous about it. For the first time in my life, it's easy to preach about having, you know, peace and faith, but all of a sudden, I had to do that. I struggled with the whole thing. Oh, people were praying for me. But when I got to the hospital and they prepared for the surgery, they put me in an area there, and um, I'm waiting to go into the operating room. And just then, there's a cart next to me, a stretcher, and the person says, Pastor Ralph, what are you doing here? And I knew the man, Jesse. He was a member of my church. I said, what are you doing here? He said, obviously the same thing. We're here to have surgery. He said, I've been wishing somebody would pray for me. And he reached over and he said, give me, can I have, hold your hand? And I reached over and we had prayer for each other. And just then the nurse came in and said, oh, I see. said, I didn't want to interrupt you until you were done praying. She says, I know Christ is my savior. You gentlemen are going to be fine because you began this whole process with prayer. And that's so very important. When I got in there, the, 
the doctor, said a fat last, the surgeon, a couple words to me. I said, before you put me under, can I say another prayer? And he said, by all means, you can do that. And when I got done saying amen, I felt a peace. You know, it just came on me, and I was going to be all right. And, of course, once you go to sleep, you wake up and the surgery's over. Six and a half hours later. Joy can be present in the most difficult times of trial. The Canovas, uh, Canova virus is facing all of us. We're facing a situation we've never experienced before. We've gone through world wars and we've had rationing and blackout drills and all that kind of stuff. And I remember as a kid when the Korean War was going on and, and I was just a little kid. But this is different. When will peace finally come? Wars come to an end. This will come to an end. As of yesterday, I looked up on the computer and it says 95,730 people have died so far. And right now, it may be New York says they're doing a little better. But you know what? Yeah, I'll tell you what. This is going to still continue for quite a while. I like the little chorus that says, The joy of the Lord is my strength. And on this Easter Sunday, I want you to know the joy of the Lord. And I want it to be your strength. A great thing took place on that Easter morning. The two Marys went to the tomb to prepare the body. But they returned with great joy. They went there sad and, and depressed, but they left knowing, and they had seen Jesus, and now they went to tell the others. This morning, as we celebrate again another Easter Sunday, I proclaim to you the greatest news ever given, and that news is, as the women were told, he is not here, he has risen. And because of that, all that Jesus claimed was validated on that Easter Sunday morning. The words of the hymn, he lives, should be our testimony. He said, and it goes like this, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. And I'll tell you what, right now, we need a little assurance. But even through all of this, God is with us every step of the way. The chorus ends with these words. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. I pray that is your testimony, and I want to leave you with that thought, that we do serve a risen Savior, and we know he lives because he lives within my heart. We want to close the closing hymn today, and um, because he lives, number 364, 364. Son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy he gives. But greater still, the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lived. Because he lived, I can face tomorrow. Because he lived, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. And then one day, 
I'll cross the river I'll fight life's fine Oh, war with pain And then as death Gives way to victory I'll see the lights of glory And I know he reigned Because he lived I can face tomorrow Because he lived All fear is gone Because I know He holds the future And life is worth the living Just because he lives And life is worth the living Just because he lives What a great song, huh? As we close in prayer today, I... Again, um, again, a lot of thoughts go through my mind, and one of these days again, we'll be gathered here as a church family. But for now, I'm glad we can do this. I wish all of you a very blessed Easter. And again, let's close the word of prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you that we can proclaim this message and to celebrate the resurrection because you defeated death. Because you live, we can face tomorrow. We can face whatever comes our way. Let's not let the circumstances get us down. And now, Lord, again, we thank you again that we serve a risen Savior. We thank you for our personal relationship with Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. And remember, as we look at our tomb, the tomb is empty. The stone has been rolled away. Praise the Lord for Jesus Christ. Amen. And God bless you all.